So I remember that Thursday before spring break really vividly. I was working on assignments, and um, I had seen that the Big Ten basketball tournament had gotten canceled. Um, and once I saw that, though, I kind of knew other things might start to go as well, because that's kind of a, a very prominent event. And so it was kind of starting to dawn on me that things within this semester were definitely going to change. And by that point, we kind of knew classes would be online already anyway. Um, so when the email came from Josh Whitman that everything would be canceled for all competitions for the spring semester, it was definitely kind of hard to process in the moment and really saddening. Um, but I think through this past week and a half, um, or two weeks basically, um, I've been able to kind of reflect a lot. And as Jonathan and Coach Turk mentioned, like, we've had a lot of success this last season, and you can only be thankful for all the opportunities that we've gotten so far. Um, and it's the right decision to kind of cancel things and shut things down and make sure that people can be safe and healthy throughout this time. And, um, it's interesting to see how that develops across the board, both on the university scale and athletic scale, but just for the country as a whole. Okay, this is Scarlett from the News Gazette. Um, Coach Turk had mentioned that when he met with you know, the team after the season was canceled, that he you know, told the story of how um, when he was at Western Michigan, he was called in and was told his entire program was going to be uh, you know shut down, and just how maybe you know those athletes you know responded and bounced back and were still successful even you know, without a team. and um, what, what was that like, just maybe to have him share kind of a, what he said was kind of a personal story you know, about a similar, but I mean, obviously not exactly the same situation. It was definitely really reassuring because um, we had that meeting not long after Josh Whitman's email came out. And so we were all still trying to process what, everything that was going on and just being able to collectively get together and kind of have each other's presence. Um, it was really helpful, but then for him to share that story, um, it, it really meant a lot because now we can see that people have gone through this before. We're not the only ones that are faced with these kind of challenging situations, and everyone across the country is facing it right now, too. But um, through this previous experience that he had, we know that people go on to be successful. This is an important moment in life where you're able to kind of learn from these hardships, but then it can lead to something really great in the long run. And it's tough right now, but you can start to see the light at the end of the tunnel, too. Carolyn, Coach Turk also talked about um, you having a job offer and that sort of being a making your decision, you know, really tough, you know, and just kind of, you know, it's just maybe something that, you know, not everybody else is facing, you know, where they're, they have a great opportunity to start their career um, versus, you know, return for another year of doing. What, what they love. What is it like to, to be trying to decide, you know, should I start my professional career right now or should I do another round of, you know, my passion and my craft? It's definitely a really big decision and really hard to kind of process everything that's going on. Um, and things have been changing so quickly that I'm kind of just trying to keep it on the back burner for right now and not be too hard about it. But um, I've had a lot of really good success academically here and it's led to really good opportunities out in the workforce and so having that job offer has been really nice throughout this year because I knew that I had something at the end of all of this um, but knowing that I didn't get that final outdoor season is also kind of hard to weigh into that balance because I had a lot of success indoor. It was really exciting to see things come together. It's been a long process and a lot of hard work has gone into it and um, all the support of the coaches has meant a lot and knowing that they're behind me and they'll discuss options with me when I'm kind of ready to fully process everything is, is nice to know. But um, for right now, it's definitely still one of those really difficult things to even try and wrap my head around. Yeah, I'm sure it must be, you know, really difficult. Um, so sorry if I'm crying like too much, but uh, I know you're like a, an electrical engineer. Um is like what what is the job if you don't mind me asking and you know what do you what is the your career sort of plan yeah so the past few summers i've interned with 3m up in st paul minnesota at their corporate headquarters um, and i've been in one of their r d labs so it's uh, my full-time position is kind of the same role just at a full-time level 
Um, and they have really great projects that they work on. And it's been really great experiences as an intern, and I know it will continue to be a full-time employee, too. And they're really relevant right now, too, with all of the work that they're doing related to the virus and how they can try and help hospitals and all those healthcare workers get a hold of the situation, too, which is kind of an important feature that is also kind of weighing into this decision, I guess. Wow, yeah. That First of all, that's really cool. Congratulations. Um, so you have a... You're thinking about this in a, a literal sense of maybe, you know, you, you want to be a part of the effort to stop this to them? Am I correct in asking that? Um, a little bit. Well, so the roles that I've been in before weren't necessarily directly related to the medical side of the work that 3M does, sure. but um, it is one of those really big companies that has a lot of wide seeming effects, and um, it's, it's interesting to like think about how that fits into what's going on in the world today, too. But my work wouldn't necessarily be directly tied to that, but it's just kind of things that I've processed about the, that decision. I got you. Um, kind of on a different note, you're a, a first-time scorer at the Big Ten Championships um, this year. You know, what is what what was it? What did it mean to you to, to you know make that accomplishment and and you know kind of have that moment and at, you know now just and looking back at that now at this point. That was a really special day. Um, it's been a long time coming, I think. Um, and the coaches have believed in me all along the way, where um, our pole vault specific coach, Brian Carell, has said all along that, oh, I know you can jump 13 feet. And this year is when it finally started to come together, and I hit one of those goals. And then um, that translated well into scoring at the Big Ten meet. And it would have been nice to do that during outdoors, too, and kind of keep that momentum rolling um, and keep going for higher heights. Um, but it, it really is the culmination of a lot of hard work and a lot of faith from the coach's side, too. Um, I started off jumping like 11 feet, <laughs> well, 11 six was my high school PR. And so to see the progress that's come just from these past years on the track team has been really great. Um, and so finally kind of wrapping that up into a, a good indoor big tent was really special. Is that comforting for you, you know, knowing that you kind of, finally were able to, to, you know, get over that hump and, and, and do that? Yeah, it's definitely comforting knowing that the indoor Big Ten meet was such a, a good way to end the indoor season as well as well, maybe potentially my entire career as a track athlete. But um, it, it's kind of reassuring, again, to see that all this time and effort, it really has led to good things both academically and um, it's starting to show on the athletic field, too. What's kind of your plan for the foreseeable future, just with training and everything? Um, and are you at home right now, or are you on campus? And just what's kind of the dynamic right now? So I'm still on campus. It made the most sense for me as I was trying to make those decisions on whether to go home or not. Um, once the news came out that all classes would be online or gotcha. anything like that. Um, and so right now I'm still trying to keep it keep active because I think that helps you mentally too when you're kind of in uh, an apartment all day. It's nice to be able to go outside, get some fresh air, stay socially distant from people, but be able to kind of refresh yourself that way. Um, I'm still staying active. I'm in contact a lot with teammates and, and coaches, which has been really nice too. So it doesn't feel like we're entirely removed <laughs> right away because of the situation. Um, and that's kind of been a, a nice way to stay <laughs> positive and, and kind of excited during these times that we have, we still have a lot of communication within the team and um, especially our event group we're a pretty close-knit group of people and um, like last night we made a video where we would do a handstand and flip the bottle and <laughs> um, people come up with creative stuff like that just to like get our minds away from what's going on occasionally and just enjoy 